Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Saturday Morning Math Group. It's great to see you all here on this crisp, cool Saturday morning. Um, without further ado, let me. Well, actually, sorry. One further ado. Um, so, as you got, as many of you know, um, the Saturday Morning Math Group hosts the American Mathematics competitions uh, every year, actually twice a year. The AMC eight in the fall, and then the AMC ten twelve in the spring. Um, sign up for that is now open. You can sign up for it. You can register to take the uh, competition with us on our website. So if you have any questions about that, um, please come find me or email me. I'm um, happy to talk about that with you. And now, without any more further ado, um, here is our, oh no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget names when I'm stressed. Names? Yes. Pedro. Pedro, Pedro somebody. <laughs> you don't need a last name. This is Pedro, Dr. Pedro, my speaker. And take it away. <laughs> so how is it going? Good. Good? How does it feel to come and do some math on a Saturday morning? <laughs> I mean, because we're going to try to do some math. Because that's how math works, I think. It's, it's like if you go to a basketball game, you're not playing basketball, right? I mean, you're just watching basketball. Same thing is with math, I think. If you come to a math talk, you're not doing math, you're just watching math, and that's not fun. So we'll try to do some math, I hope. And um, I will try to give you a little bit of an idea of random stuff about pi. Now, it's not random things about pi, it's things that have to do with randomness and pi. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm not going to talk about random things in here. I'm going to talk about things that have to do with random stuff and pi. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, can everybody see that or do we turn off the lights? Maybe, I just have to figure out which one is the right thing. Uh, maybe this one? Okay, <laughs> much better, right? <clears throat> All right, so first of all, I'm just going to um, kind of like remember you or remind you what is, uh, what is pi, what is this thing that we call pi, and uh, then we can talk a little bit about, uh, no, that's not what I want, this is what I want, and um, I guess the first question is what is pi, right? So the thing is, are you with Lisa or with Homer, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, actually, you know that the math people are really funny or silly, I don't know. But we always do this, this puns with pi and pi, right? <laughs> that happens all the time. But we really mean a different thing. We actually mean the thing on the left and probably something related to that. <laughs> Now, you know that pi is not 3, or is it? No. Is it, is it exactly 3? No. No? No. How many people think that it's not 3? Okay, good. How many people that think that it's exactly 3? Nobody. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. That means that you're awake. Okay? But you know that something funny happened with this, because in 1847, 1847, that's 150 years ago, something like that, right? In Indiana, somebody said, hey, I actually know what's the exact value of pi, and they wanted to pass a bill on that. <laughs> so they went to legislation, and they, they wanted to pass this pi bill in Indiana. And they were saying that pi was exactly 3.2. <laughs> no! And they, 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 they tried to legalize that thing and make it like by law. But fortunately, there were some math professors that said, hey, you're crazy. <laughs> this is not true. So we all know where pi is coming from, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We just read it backwards, and it spells pi. That's why it's 314. Everybody knows that, right? <laughs> or is it only me? I mean, that's why it's 314. Because if you read it backwards, it's just pi. I mean, makes sense. Why else would we have 314, right? But actually, why is that true? 
I mean, when when we talk about pi, uh, I guess we we always think about circles, right. or at least I'm the crazy one that always thinks about circles, because pi is a very nice number that relates quantities in a circle. Okay, that's what the actual value of pi is. Basically, what we do is we take the perimeter of a circle, we call it circumference, the perimeter of the circle, and then we divide it by this big line that it's called the diameter. So if we grab any circle that you want, any circle, like if you try to measure the sun, if that is possible, if you can do that, if you measure the perimeter, that is the edge of the, of the circle, and the diameter, and if you divide those two numbers, you get pi. If you move on to another circle, I don't know, your car wheels, and if you measure the perimeter, and then you measure the diameter, and you divide those two numbers, you get the same constant, you get pi. If you look at the bottom of a glass, you know, like a little glass, and you put it that way, you measure the circumference, and then you divide by the diameter, that will give you pi. So pi is something very interesting because it appears in every single circle that you can find. Every circle, every single circle, okay? Does that make sense? Now that's pretty weird, I mean, you're telling me that you grab any circle, like that has a circular shape, right? If I measure the, the edge, and if I, da if I divide that by the measure of the diameter, I'll get pi right there. I mean, that's pretty weird. For any circle, you will have the same number. And that number, that number is about that, right? 3, 14, 15, 2, whatever. But I don't know if you notice, in math we don't like the whatever. We want to have something exact, right? I mean, if I just tell you pi is 3, 14, 15, 9, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, 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 what do you mean by that? What's dot, 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 right? <laughs> so we need something a little bit more accurate if you wish. So the main question is how can we get pi? That's the main question. How can we get pi? Now if you're clever enough you would say you grab your calculator and you plug in pi, right? <laughs> and you do enter and you will find pi. Okay, that, that can work a little bit but let me show you one way that actually is a very old way to, to find what is the expansion of pi. And it's very concrete, it's very simple to do it, okay? So what I'm going to do is the following thing. I'm going to show you this. Does that look like a circle to you? Because for me it looks like a weird thing in here. But is that better? Maybe it looks like a circle. So the strategy is the following thing. I'm just going to do the same thing that I told you before but not only with a circle, but with any shape. I'm going to measure the length of the side, or the perimeter as we call it, and then I'm going to divide by the diameter. Or in this case, I'm going to divide by the, by the biggest diagonal. That's what I'm going to do. So again, the strategy is you grab any object, and you measure the length of the edge, and then you divide by the diameter, by the biggest line that you can fit inside. That's what, what I'm going to do. So in this case, for, the, for this little square that I have right here, we know how to find the perimeter, right? We just have to add the four sides. That's the perimeter, or the length of the edge. And then I just have to find out what is the length of this thing. And again, I don't want to bore you today, so I'm just going to show you what is the ratio. So after you do that, I'll just save you the hassle. You will get this number. Is that pi? No. That's not pi. Is it close to pi? Yeah, it depends how sleepy you are, right? It could be, but it's not the best out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shape, not a square, but maybe a pentagon that is a little bit closer to what a circle looks like. And I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to add the perimeter or I'm going to measure the length of the edge and then divide by the length of the biggest line that I can fit inside. Okay? So if we do that, if we do that, we get something a little bit nicer. If we divide those two numbers, 
we get 2.93. Do you remember what was the previous number? 2.8. This is 2.93. It's getting closer to pi, right? But are we still yet over there? We're still missing something, right? So if I can do it once, I can do it twice, I can do it three times. Do you see what I'm trying to do? I'm increasing the number of sides. Do you see that? I started with four, then I brought, what, five? Can I do a five? Like a five? Then I have six, I have an hexagon now, right? So I repeat the same process. I add all the sides, that's the perimeter, and then I divide by the biggest diagonal that I can have. And that will give me three. So maybe that's what the guy in Indiana saw, and he was like, okay, let's move on, and we already got our pie, right? But I can continue this thing. Actually, I can, I can grab, what, a polygon with seven sides, or eight sides, or nine sides, or ten sides. Do you guys know what's the name of this one? Very good. Let's see, do you guys know what's the name of this one? What's the name of that one? That's a huge agon. <laughs> Just 18, right? So if I keep doing this thing, and I, if I increase the number of sides, do you see that I actually get closer and closer to pi? And actually, visually, do you see that the thing, the pinkish thing that is right there, actually looks like a circle, right? Almost. Almost. What if I keep increasing the number of sides? It's, yeah. Looks more and more like a circle, right? And this also looks more and more like a circle. Actually, that little number pi is very important or distinguished for, for a circle. It's what makes a circle a circle, if you wish. Because if you divide, remember, if you divide the perimeter, that's the total length. Of the, of the sides divided by the biggest line that you can fit inside, that will give you 314 and blah, 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 right? And this is a very nice way, maybe lengthy but nice, to actually find a good approximation of pi. <laughs> Have a 200 gone, right? So now you can probably see a big mess, but it looks kind of like a circle. And uh, we can kind of think that is a circle, right? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Now this was discovered, I think, like, what, good 3,000 years ago or something like that? People had nothing to do, right? <laughs> I mean, they were just <laughs> drawing polygons and then measuring things just for fun. <laughs> that sounds like a good life to me. So this is one of the first ways to calculate the number pi. But again, this is not pi, it's just close to pi, right? Now the thing with pi is that, um, I guess the, 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 the nice thing that we're going to talk about today is that we cannot have the, the end of pi in here. It actually keeps going. What do I mean by that? What I mean is the following thing, so here we, we were. We kind of like understand a little bit better where pi comes from, okay? So we kind of know what is pi, it's something that is related with the circle and we kind of know how to get it. So pi is 314, right? But actually many more. And we could keep going and going and going and going and going, right? What do I mean by that? So what I have in here are the, t the first two digits of pi, right? You want maybe the five first digits? I can show you that. You want uh, 
17 first digits. I can show you those. How many digits do you want to know? 150. 150? Okay, let me do 50 and then 100. So 50? Okay, okay, one at a time. So 50, then 100. Then somebody said 500, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Then somebody said what, 1,000? 10,000. No, but somebody said 1,000 first. <laughs> Don't cheat. Okay, 10,000. Okay, you want 10,000? That's 10,000. And then somebody said a million, right? There it is. Now somebody said a billion, but uh, no, five billion, but um, kind of tired, so. So this is a million digits. I mean, do you see that? We can get as many digits of pi as we want. And we can keep doing this, like all day long we can spend the whole week doing this, right? And uh, if we get the five billion digits, we probably have to wait like for three hours in order to get the whole list and we probably will spend like 27 hours trying to read the whole thing, right? But we can do it because actually pi does not end. Does that make sense? I mean, I can just ask Pi, hey, give me more digits. More di I need more digits. Come on, give me more digits. I can always ask Pi for more digits. It will never end. That's something that we call infinite. Does that make sense? You guys have questions, jokes, comments? Uh, pi is about 22 divided by 7. Okay. Would, would you want to make a law about that? Yeah. We can pass a bill. Well, it's like Say, say that again, say that again. How much did you say it was? 22 divided by 7. Okay, 22 divided by 7. Should we trust him? 22 divided by 7. What if I calculate this? I should erase the million digits, right? <laughs> That's pretty close. Let's see what if I take the first 10 digits of pi and we compare those two things. Yeah, very close. But still, is that pi? No. Not really, right? And probably that's a very good thing that you said. Because you remember that fraction. That's just dividing two numbers. But that's not what pi is. And actually, the nice thing about pi is that you can never put it as a fraction. It's, it's worse than that. It's irrational. That's the fancy word. When, what do you have for us? My dad told me a joke about pi. So there was a dirt farmer who never went to college for 10 years. He sent off to college. Two years later, he comes back, and the little boy he gets asked what he learned in math. And he replies, pi squared. Farmer replies, I used to say for two years, and my son tells me that pi is square. Everyone knows pi is round. Cornbread is square. You can break it. You can make it as a square, right? That would be nice, actually. That would be a perfect joke. Hey, here I brought you pi square, right? <laughs> So we learned two important things about pi. It's irrational and it's circle, right? That's something very nice. So there is one little thing about the digits of pi, which I think they're, it's, it's pretty nice to see. And uh, it's called the Feynman point. I don't know if uh, any of the parents know this guy Feynman or have heard of, of his name. Do you know Feynman? Yeah? Yes. What do you know about him? I don't know if you walked on the... There are two main entrances for the building, right? One that is right next to, to this auditorium, the other one that is a little bit further away. If you walk into the, into the other one, you would see something that like a little statue or something 
that says Feynman diagram, stainless Feynman something. Then this guy was a physicist, uh, very, 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 very good one. And he had to do to, with many, many things in, in the States. Um, actually, when, when the Apollo thing happened, where they couldn't return to Earth, they called, hey, Mr. Feynman, can you help us with this? <laughs> because he was smart. He was very smart. And there, there was one thing about Pi and that made him famous with this Feynman point. Because he knows that the digits never stop. We just saw that, right? And there's no pattern. And there's no what? And there's no pattern. Yeah, that's important. There's no pattern. That's the same thing as saying that it is not a fraction. Okay? <coughs> or that it's irrational. Maybe it doesn't think. There is no pattern. Okay? So he said, or well, he was uh, trying to joke with it, and he tried to find a place in the decimal expansion in which he could find six nines. So nine, 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 nine. nine. He was trying to do this. So, I mean, the joke for him was that he wanted to recite all the digits up to that point so he could say 99999 nine, 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 and he could make a joke of saying yeah and afterwards everything is a 9 which is not true right but he wanted to do that joke so <laughs> so his purpose was to find that point 9999 nine, 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 so he could memorize all the digits up to that point that was that was his intention and that's that's this guy So, we already saw some digits of pi, right? Can you spot where are the nine nines, or the six nines? Can you find them? Right there? Yeah? That's why it's called find my point. Too bad it happens at the position 792. Did, did he pick the nines because that was the first series of six numbers? No, it was random. I don't, well, I don't see any... Any other repeated like, pattern? Like, did he just get lucky? Yeah. Or did he... He just got lucky. I, 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 don't know, I would tend to suspect that he actually found the first order of six. No, it, it was not reverse engineered. Yeah. He actually came up with the question first and the answer. Oh, yeah, it, he got lucky. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, you can see like a couple of sixes there, a couple of twos, a couple of sevens. I don't see if there is any three-digit pattern. Do you see any three-digit pattern? Yes. Three zeros. Where, where? Can I get it? Can I get it? Can I get it? My thing is too slow, I'll use that mouse. There's one here. There is another one. There's uh, three ones here. One at the bottom. Where, where? Here there's another zero, zero, zero. But we don't have any other six digit repetition, right? He just got lucky. Uh huh. Yeah, on the fourth row from the bottom to the top, right? Or fifth row, whatever that is. So this kind of like suggests that that the digits of pi are kind of random. So what do I mean by random? Basically, what I mean is imagine about any number, you can find it in pi. Now, what I just said, don't tell anybody that I said it, <laughs> because nobody has been able to prove that fact. And in math, everything is about proofs. So nobody is able to prove that, that appears to be that way. Okay? So that means that people have tried this a lot, and they actually have been successful with that. So let's see if we can find some numbers in pi. And for this, I actually probably would like to have the million digit. So this is this is a million. Uh, here I have it. 
Um, do I have a million? I do have a million. All right. So let's see. If we find this five mine point, that is a nine 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 nine. It happens at this position. So that means I have to run 763 positions to reach that point. Okay, we already saw that. Actually, you guys noticed the 000 and the 111, right? So this should be actually before this thing. What about 000000000? 000000000? Well, just three zero zero zeros is 602. That means if you write down, you will have to write down 602 numbers in order to start getting a 000. The other one that we saw was the 111. 111. And actually, that happens sooner. You only have to write down 154 digits. Where's spy high? Where is what? Spy high, what is that? Spy zero, zero, zero. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, I watch that only in Spanish, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, did you notice one thing? This Feynman guy wanted to memorize 763 digits of pi. I mean, he probably could have done it, but that would be a lot. Okay, let me show you something. Because we're, we're saying that we can find any number here, any possible number. I want to look for my date of birth, actually. And now I see if that happens in pi. Oh yeah, happens. I'll probably have to memorize 847,000 digits, so I probably won't do that. <laughs> if, even if I use the, the four digit, this thing will be probably even further away. Yeah, I'm just going up to a million. Maybe we can find out what is our zip code. That's what it is, or it's the other way around. Uh, it's 741. That's UT's zip code. Okay, so I will need five volunteers. Do you want to come here? Okay, the first five. Just five. Just five. Okay, six. <laughs> And you'll get to choose, you get to choose. So we're going to, we're going to find some numbers in pi, but not really big numbers because it will take us like three hours to do that. So think about just at most, at most six digits. Okay, at most six digits. So who wants to start? Okay, you, you were first, you were first. Which one do you want? You can tell the audience. Which one? Okay, so it was, say that again, zero? Zero six, fifteen, zero six. Um, zero six, like this. So what do you think? Where is it going to be? Ah, it's not there. That means that it doesn't appear in the first million digits. You got lucky, like really lucky. So... That means that you are not born yet. <laughs> you want to try with another number? Okay. Uh, 78749. 78749. Do you think that will be there? Better should be there. Oh, yeah. 70,000 digits. Okay, instead of your zip code, you can just write down what is the position in pi. That would be nice. <laughs> now you, can you tell the audience what is your number? Six, oh, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's see where that happens. Six, oh, two, three, four, five. 
Ha! Huh. You guys are getting lucky today. <laughs> Four zeros? Let's see if that happens. That does happen. It's actually uh, a quarter through, right? It's a quarter million. That's pretty far away. Who's next? Okay, what do you want? Million. What? Um, I want to do a million because we're searching for a million digits. Okay. Uh, do I have enough zeros? I do have enough zeros, right? One more? I don't think this is, oh nah, it's not there. We can start erasing zeros and see what happens. That happens. So the first one that happens is 10,000. Okay. Now, which is your number? Zero, four. 0, 4, 24, 8, 0. Let's see where that happens. Wow, almost at the end. Yeah. Well, there's no end. Well, the end to the 1 million digit approximation. <laughs> I kind of I want to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> That actually appears pretty soon. Whoa. Why do you want? Let's see. 06, ah. 06, 03? 02. We do have a winner. All right. Thank you very much. Can we hey, give him a hand or something? You didn't get to go. Oh, okay. We're, we have one more. We have one more. What do you want? One hundred. Let's look for one hundred. So one hundred, that's the last number. It actually appears pretty soon. Thank you. So basically this is why we, what we mean by random. That um, pretty much every number that we can imagine appears right there. And there's people that actually think that, you know how with computers you can go back and forth between numbers and letters, right? For example, you can call A to be 1, B to be 2, C to be 3, D is 4, E is 5, and so on. So you can go back and forth between numbers and, and letters. So if you translate the digits of pi into letters, you can actually find any word that you, w that you want written over there. That's what we hope that happens. Um, the only problem is that if I do that, I will need like probably a hundred times more digits to find like a meaningful word. That's why I didn't do it. But with numbers work pretty nicely, right? So that's what we mean by, by random. They appear to be random, which is very nice. It's very, very nice. So now let's try to do our first experiment. This will be like a real life experiment about pi. So let me tell you a little bit about the idea of this. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get some toothpicks. And uh, we're going to just drop the toothpick on that lined paper that you have. And the experiment is very, very, very simple. So um, actually, I guess I can use this. Can I borrow one of those papers? Thank you. So our experiment is very, very simple. We're just going to throw, throw one, so just drop it. And like this one, for example, this is a su success because the thing is crossing the line. So let's throw, say, 20 times each. Let's throw 20 times and see how many times 
I end up crossing something. Like for example, in this case, I don't cross any line, right? Except the words. Yeah, and that doesn't count. So right now I have one for two, right? I've thrown the thing two times, but only once landed on the, on the line. Now I have three for one. So do that 20 times. Do that 20 times. And record your numbers, please. Oh, you don't have anything? You have one, right? And here? Okay, great. Make sure that the, 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 the toothpick actually lands on the, on the piece of paper, right? No. If if it goes to the side, just do it again. Yeah. All of them? Yeah. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. So out of the twenty, you got twenty. Were you throwing them like this? <laughs> just do one one at a time. Do one at a time. Just one toothpick at a time. Yeah, that counts. That would count. Uh, don't forget to write down your numbers. Okay. So write down 20 out of 20. So please don't forget to write down your numbers in the piece of paper. Write down your numbers. How many lines out of how many throws? So if you if you're already done with it, you can um, you can pass the, the the piece of paper to the line. So just remember to write down your your throws and how many lines, and then we can try to see what happens when I input this here. So if you're done, you can just give me your piece of paper. Done. 14 or 6? Uh, 14 lines. <coughs> ah, okay, I see. I already have my number. Thank you. Do you want to on Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. 11 yeses, 9 noes. 11 yeses, okay. Thanks. Let me, let me start plugging this into the into the computer and see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have 14, 20. We didn't have a pencil, but we had 20 and 20 throws and 11 lines. Okay. Thanks. 15 out of 20. Thank you. Ten out of twenty. Ten out of twenty. Thank you. Just put it there, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Sixteen out of 
20. Thank you. 10 out of 20. I got 10 out of 22. You also got 10 out of 20? Yeah. Did you, did you get... 13 out of 20. Uh, excuse me? Mm-hmm. Uh, did you type in mine? In what? Did you type in mine? In mine? Mine. Oh, yours. Yes. Yeah, you came earlier, right? 10 out of 20. Yeah. He said 10 out of 20 two times. 1 out of 20. He has, he 16 out of 20. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. 12 out of 20, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. 8 out of 12. This side's mine, and I have no idea what she did there. Okay. 12 out of 20. And you had 20 out of 20, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll believe you. 11 out of 20. Thank you. This is 3. Okay. So 18 out of 21. Thanks. 9 of 20. You want to read them to you? Yeah, whatever works. 9 for 20. Uh huh. 12 for 20. Uh huh. 15 for 20. 18 for 20. 18 for 20. 14 for 20. 14 for 20. 17 for 20. 17 for 20. 9 for 20. 9 for 20. Um, like that. Thanks. 16. 16. I'd have a pencil sorted. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. 11, 20. 13. All right. Thanks. Are you planning to break around 11? Sorry? Are you planning to take the break around 11? Uh, we, we can take a break out of the okay. Yeah, right, that's fine. Or whenever, like, yeah, I yeah, think that's, that's good. good. Okay. Yeah, I think it's good. So is everybody done throwing to toothpicks at the, at the page? You guys know that actually we got somebody that throw 20 at 20, right? I don't know. I hope not. That's fine. So let's do this. Yeah, 
Close, huh? Maybe you saw the guy from Indiana there. Yeah, probably. So I hope I enter all the all the numbers correctly. Um, so the idea is that you guys were throwing these things, and that was pretty random, right? I mean, otherwise, how can you get 20 out of 20, right? This is pretty random. And basically, the idea is that even though it is a random thing, a random activity, there's no way you can know how the toothpick is going to land. I mean, even though that is random, there is some sort of pattern that governs this thing. It's the same thing as if you grab a coin and you throw the coin to the, to the air. If you do it enough times, you're probably going to get the same number of heads and the same number of tails. I mean, if you are bored, try it, trust me. <laughs> you just grab, if you have like a spare hour or something like that, just grab a coin and start throwing the coin. And then count how many, how many heads and how many tails you get. After an hour, you probably will get like 200 and 205. It's, it matches very, very nicely. And that's what we call the probability of something happening. Whenever you divide these two numbers, that's the probability. So the probability of getting a, um, getting a head in a fair coin that's one half, it's about half of the times, right? So the same thing is in here. Whenever you were throwing the toothpick, that's finding what's the probability of, of that landing on the line. So what we did is we just counted how many, how many things we had out of how many throws. And uh, the formula that I used is given by this. Basically, that's, that's what we did. Okay, and that is what, what it's called Buffon's Needle. Apparently, it was a game or something like that. Again, people in math had m so much spare time, I think. So they were they were they were bored. So they said, "Let's throw needles in in a piece of paper, and out of nothing, pi appears." So that's pretty impressive, I think. But it's uh, also 
kind of seems pretty random in it because depending on how big the lines are, how right. the needles are. So if you, you if you if you if you if you change the width of the line, yes, then then that probability will change. That's why that little two appears right there. If I change the distance between the lines, the two will be a different number will be maybe a four or a six or maybe one quarter or something like that. So yes, it depends on the on the width. In this case, in this case, the distance between the lines is the same as the distance or the length of the needle. That's why we have that little two right there. But I mean it's it's very impressive that no matter what the distribution is, I mean you will still get a multiple of pi. I don't see any circles there. And yet pi appears. I mean, if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what can do. It's, <laughs> you have no circles, you're not drawing anything, you're not measuring any length or any diameter, but yet pi appears. So that's, that's pretty sweet, I think. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, but not in the, in the piece of paper, right? That's the, that's the trick. And um, if you go to college and you go to statistics class, you can probably understand why this is actually happening. There's a nice proof using calculus and probability. And basically all it's doing is measuring areas. That's why the circle appears in the end. Okay? So, I don't know, but it's very interesting that pi has to do with random stuff in so many different ways. So, so far we've seen the randomness in the digits of pi, and actually how something that appears to be random has pi underlying it. And that's pretty sweet. So I guess we are ready to take a break and then we can come back and do some more stuff. Yeah, all right, so we're gonna take about a 10 minute break. Feel free to go out um, to our bathroom one floor up. Um, you can guess that and everything. And feel, definitely feel free to talk to me, to talk to Pedro. Uh, um, we'll see you later. Yes. According the, to the circumstances. Right. That will change depending on the distance between the lines. Okay. So and uh, it's basically uh, just a ratio between the length of the line. Uh, sorry, the length of the toothpick. Maybe we can pass this around again. Thanks. <laughs> so let us try to find another random thing about pi. And another random thing I think happens with numbers. And this one is pretty nice. I really like this one. I really like numbers. I don't like to calculate numbers, but I like numbers. And uh, this one is pretty fun. So, in order to do this, we need to know what's the meaning of this coprime thing. And probably most of you haven't heard of this, but you probably have used them. So two numbers are coprime if they have different factors. That's what it is. So what do I mean by that? For example, if you look at number three, it only has two divisors, right? One and, and three, nothing else. Number eight, it has one, two, four, and eight as divisors. Now the only thing that they share is number one, right? That's the only one that they share. Like for example, if I pick four and six, four and six, they share one and two, very good. So are they coprime? No, they're not coprime because in order to be coprime you have to share only one. So if I pick for example six and fifteen. One and three. 
three. One and three. Are they coprime? No. No. How about six and seventeen? Uh, yeah. Actually, seventeen is is extra good because it's prime, right? So it's easier. Let's see, 25, 25, and 6. No. no. Only one, only one. No. Only one, right? Yeah. They share only one, so that means that they are co-prime. For example, what if I grab 12 and 12 and 12 and 33? Three, 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 three. No. They have three, right? They're not. 42 and... 42 and... 42 and... 35. Uh, they are both available by seven. seven. So, no, right? Right. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get two numbers and try to check if they're coprime or not. Now, what it's pretty nice or what are we going to do right now is we're going to do that the same thing and guess what pi is going to appear somewhere there so what we're going to do is we're going to grab let's say 10 numbers at random 10 numbers 10 pairs of numbers I should okay. say and then just think about the numbers. Think about two numbers and then check if they are coprime or not. So in the end we're going to count how many coprimes we have. And uh, somewhere around there we're going to start having pi. So again, the idea right now is take ten pairs of numbers. So think about two random numbers, check if they're coprime. Think about two other random numbers, check if they're coprime. Do that ten times. And then tell me how many coprimes do you have. Okay? So try to do that right now. So just try to think about random numbers and check if, if they're coprime. I guess I have a pen. That's illegal, right? One, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, but now it's going to change. Yeah, no, obviously not. <laughs> it's actually worse than nothing. <laughs> So actually, you guys can tell me how many coprimes do you have? Three. Three? You found three? Six. Six? Infinite. Infinite? What do you mean by that? Sorry? A rule? I don't know if it's true or not, but it seems to be working. What's the rule? Um, any, any number and then um, that number plus one. So yes, those, those have to be coprimes. But try to think, so try to think about random numbers. Number because number. if you have a rule, they're not random anymore. That's the thing. But you, what you said is totally true. Anybody else? Seven. 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 
Somebody else said seven, right? Eight? No. So you did in, in total you did seven, right? Okay, and out of those seven, how many you had? How many you have? Six out of ten, right? Five. Five out of ten. Nine. Five. Four. Six. Three. Seven. Four. Nine. Three. Eight. Eight. Four. Five. Eleven. Eleven. Were you testing me? Seven? Zero. Zero. Really? Hold on, hold on. Seven. Nine. Two. Four? Nine. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Two. You have to find all the divisors of both of them and, t and check which one do you have, if you share anything or not. Seven. Seven. Anybody else? Six? Oops. Six? One? Four? What was the highest number that you guys thought? Nine? No, I mean out of the random numbers. What is the highest one that you guys thought about? Sixty four. Okay, that's that's actually tricky, isn't it? Yeah. One hundred eleven thousand one hundred Did you actually try that one? Yeah. Wow. No, that's too too big. Did you try that one? With with which one? <laughs> and they're multiples, right? Actually coming up with random numbers is it's somehow tricky. I mean if you if you ask somebody give me a random number, they're always going to tell you four. <laughs> two. The, the same numbers, right? I mean even Even if I, if I write down things like this, and I ask you, hey, give me a number in between those two, most people will think two. Yeah. Other people will think one. Pretty much nobody will say 2.25. <laughs> so actually coming, coming with, with random numbers is it's pretty weird. It's, we, we it's, it's something, yeah, pi could be, could be something between. What? Five? Yes. But let's see, out of your random numbers, let's see if we actually got something close to pi.
Do you think we got something close to pi? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. 3.26. That's fine. We got 3.24, I think. We got even closer ourselves. 3.16. And what did you do? Six out of ten. So we had square root of ten. That's that's nice. So basically, what happened here was the following thing: you guys were thinking about random numbers, right? And you were trying to figure out if those two numbers were coprime. That means that they only share one as the factor. All the other devices were different. Now, what we did was basically to calculate what's the probability of that happening. That is, we count how many um, coprimes we had out of the total number of pairs that we had. Well, that's random. So, yeah, that's very random, actually. I just like had this tally sheet, and we found that number. Okay, but actually, because finding rum numbers in a random fashion is kind of like tricky, let me put the computer to do it for us, and maybe we can find something a little bit nicer. So this is what I'm going to do. This is the way of telling the computer I want a random number. So let, let me start with something small. So I'm just going to ask the computer for two random numbers in between 1 and 100. And the computer can tell me that, right? If I want two other random numbers, I can just find them. Or I can, well, I can spend all afternoon doing this. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let me ask for two random numbers in between, say, 100,000. No, 10,000. We don't want really interesting things, just interesting things. OK. Now this is the way I can ask the computer to see if they are uh, prime number, uh, co-prime or not. Basically, it is called the GCD. Have you seen that GCD before? Yeah. What's the GCD? Right, that's what it is. The greatest common divisor or factor of two numbers. So for example, in here, I can do this, and I just grab two random numbers, and happen to be that their GCD was four. So are they coprime or not? No. They're no coprime. What if I do that once again? Again, what it's, what it's doing is just finding two random numbers for me, and then calculating the GCD. In this case, are they coprime? Yeah. They are. So by the previous thing, we were saying, hey, do this a lot of times, do this a lot of times, and then find the probability of finding coprime numbers. That's what I'm going to do here. This is the next part in here. I'm going to say, I want to repeat this a hundred times. I'm going to repeat this a hundred times. And I'm going to count how many coprimes do I have. Remember, this is just like picking random numbers, pairs of random numbers, and finding if they are coprime or not. So that's what I'm going to tell the computer to do. And then in the end, this is the exact formula that I had before, right? Six times the total number divided by the number of coprimes and then the square root of that. And if there's any, any, Justice in the world, this should be close to pi. So let me run it a hundred times. Well, it's pretty sweet. Let me do it a thousand times. Oh, it's pretty nice. Let me do it ten thousand times. It's getting better. What if I do it a hundred times? A hundred thousand times? Ah, it's even closer, right? So actually, let me change the numbers. And I want actually no, to choose random numbers in between 10,000 and 1, but actually between 100,000. And see if that changes. Wow. Ooh, it's getting better. What if I actually do a million? Okay, I can run it again. 
and again and again. We can spend all weekend doing this, right? You see, it's very close to the value of pi, is it? Okay, I can increase these numbers. I should increase maybe this one and this one and hope for the best. That's pretty cool. It's getting better. You see that? And what it's doing is just calculating random numbers, finding if they're prime, co-prime or not, just counting how many of them do I have, and then just doing that little formula. Okay? Yes, I would get more exact if I increase the number of times that I do this, that is this number right here, or the range of these random numbers. I'm going to, I'm kind of scared of doing this, but I'll try to do it and see if it doesn't break. It won't break, but it will probably take some time. It will get more and more accurate. As, uh, as, as I do this more and more times, what or waiting, if I also get bigger and bigger numbers. Of course, the price I have to pay is that I have to wait more and more time, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah? Um, why do you use that formula? Why don't you use some other formula? What makes that formula? What makes that formula is it's something very nice. Actually, meanwhile, this thing is calculating, I can kind of explain why. I'll try to explain why. <clears throat> the short answer is because 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 squared. I don't know if you guys know what's the meaning of that. That's just multiplying the same thing by itself, right? Yeah, yeah. That is... Um, 16, wouldn't it? Yeah. Then I have... Uh, I have 25 and so on. Now this is the, the tricky part. This is the tricky part. If you keep doing this forever, that means not for the weekend, but forever, you will end up with this. Yeah, I got my things matched. Yeah. You get a pie from there. And that thing's still running. Um, <clears throat> that's the short answer, because that happens. And whenever you actually calculate the probability in paper of two numbers being co-prime, that's the expression you end up with. So you see you have to multiply by 6, and then you have to take the square root of that. That's the reason why that formula looks like that. Now, why this happens, that's a North story, right? <laughs> Now, that's, that's another thing, but it, it'll, it relies on this, and this has to do a little bit, now that you ask me, you will have to suffer. Um, that has to do with something that I actually work with, that it's called zeta functions. And you probably have heard about the Riemann zeta function. If you haven't heard about that, shame on you. Um, <laughs> the Riemann zeta function is it's kind of famous because it is a very well-known problem in math and it's been out there for like 150 years maybe nobody's been able to solve it and if you solve it you just win a million dollars so that's why it's kind of famous and probably you guys uh, remember that that movie a beautiful mind you remember that movie? So in some part of that movie, he was doing that problem. We're trying to do that problem, and he becomes crazy or whatever. So um, yeah, that, this expression right, right here is what we call zeta of 2, OK? Whatever that means. And that happens to be pi squared over 6. And that's still running, right? Um, so yeah, that's the reason why. And that's basically just uh, uh, basic calculation for, for probability, and that's a good approximation for pi. Do you think we're going to have our answer? I don't even know. Can you leave it running in the, in the air and go to the other window? 
we check back later? Yeah, we can check back later. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Zeta of any even number will give a pi thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, zeta of an odd number, God knows what that is. So our approximation was pretty good, I think. We'll, we'll come back to this thing later and see if we can get something. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. So hopefully I convince you that you can find pi out of random stuff. And uh, that's one of the interesting things about pi. It's not something that is just geometric. It's actually something that appears in random stuff. And actually, if, uh, I mean, if you know a little bit of statistics, normal distribution has a pi within it. And the reason is something related to this. So that was the prime numbers. So now I'm just going to show you some nice pictures. Because everybody likes pictures, right? Yeah. So let me show you some nice pictures. And these things are called random walks. And there's, there's actually something in math that is called a random walk. And the idea of a random walk is the following thing. You have, I don't know, you're bored maybe, and you have a coin. You throw your coin. If you get a, a head, you do one step forward. If you get a, a tails, you do one step backwards. So try to do that. If you're bored, so you'll probably do things like this. And people will think that either you're crazy or drunk. <laughs> and actually, some people call these things drunken walks. Because uh, you will have these random patterns appearing. And that will take me to the first picture. Do you see that little red thing moving around? Yeah, do you see it? So uh, that thing is basically like the random walk that I described. but. It can also not only move forward and backward, but also it can move to left and to the right. It's having like a four-sided coin. Like you throw, like, well, okay, maybe, maybe it's better if you throw two coins. If you get heads, heads, you go forward. If you get heads, tails, you go to the left. If you get tails, head, you go to the right. And if you get tails, tails, you go backwards. So you throw two coins at once. And that's what the little dot is doing. So at every single step, at every single corner, it is deciding, or it is deciding at random, I should say, whether to go forward, backward, to the left, or to the right. And once the thing do does that, the pattern that it starts describing looks a little bit random. So let me show you how the pattern looks like. So after a while, the pattern looks like this. So you see it's kind of like square, but it's, that's kind of like the path that the thing is describing. So it's like if I had pain in my shoes, right? So again, remember the, 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 the idea is you have two coins, and whether the output is heads, 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 tails, tails, head, or tails, tails, you move to the, to the front, backwards, to the left, or to the right. Okay, that, that is going to be your guideline. So that's kind of like having no direction in life, right? You're actually being moved by random stuff. That's what it is. You can see in this one, it kind of goes on upper left and bottom right. Yes. It, to go on kind of a diagonal. it kind of goes like that, but actually happens to be that if I look at something that it's a little bit bigger, it kind of like moves to the other side. And that's the thing of randomness. You cannot really find a pattern, a definite pattern. Actually, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And actually, I can go a little bit deeper. And this is a very long random walk. OK, you see that it kind of like goes one way, then it goes the other way, then decides, no, I want to go the other way around. Does it always start at 0, zero? Yes, usually for, just for reference. You see that? It seems like they're all tend to be up and left. Yeah, but again, because of randomness, they will eventually go to the other side. They will eventually go down, and actually they will feel the whole thing. Yeah? Am I just crazy, or does anybody else see North America on top of <laughs> You're probably crazy, but probably everybody sees the same thing as well. 
So you can get actually any shape with this. That's the thing with randomness. Do you remember the same thing that we were talking about, the digits of pi? You can pretty much find any number within pi. So with this is the same thing, you can pretty much find any shape within these things. Because they are basically random. And there's a chicken. <laughs> over there. There's a chicken. Oh, are you hungry? I see it. I see it. Where's the chicken? <laughs> over there. Over there. I see a monkey. No, 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 no. Where? Up, left, up, left, up. Oh, no, no, no. Right, right, right. This? No. This looks more like no, a face to me. On the left, on the left, on the left. On the left? No, over there. Dark, see? I don't see the chicken. Oh, it's just off the coast of British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> right here? Yeah. Oh, I see that. Yeah. That's the chicken now. Oh, I see the chicken. I really don't see the chicken. <laughs> I actually see a face in here. Somebody else see the face right there? To the left. To the left? Okay. I'll show you where it is. Okay. So this is what we call a random walk. Okay? That's how a random walk looks like. Looks like random stuff, right? Well, yeah, also uh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. I skipped one. Wow. This is uh, another way of coloring a random walk. And the color only means like the time that it's taking you to reach one of the points. But that's also not a random walk. Don't you like that? Looks nice, right? You can find shapes and stuff like that. So this is maybe a more elaborate version of the one that I told you. So instead of just having four directions, here we have, um, we have, can I move that thing? Well, we have eight, right? So you can move in a cross and also in diagonals. And <clears throat> this is actually a way of going from numbers to directions. Or in other words, going from digits to directions. Does that make sense? So if you, have, if you have a sequence of digits, you can translate that into a sequence of steps. And we already have a sequence of digits, right? We call it pi. So you, you take the remainder with 7. So 8 becomes 0, 9 becomes 1. So you just like follow the loop. And this is what you get when you do pie. That looks like that North America chicken face thing, right? <laughs> no, it looks like a dog. See, see, it has the tail. Like here? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, it looks like a dog. So whenever you go home, remember this. Pie looks like a dog. OK? <laughs> So that's, that's what pi looks like, following this rule. And that looks like a random walk. And actually, do you remember this one that I showed you before? I actually lied. That's not a random walk. That's actually pi. That's pi. So let me show you a, a close-up to, the, to, the, to, the, to this one. Looks like that. You, do you see the, like the sharp steps? Whenever you have a lot of them, a lot of them, when you zoom out, you will have the previous one. So this is just the uh, kind of like the pattern that the digits of pi will give me. Again, the pattern, remember, is you start with three. I don't remember what was three. Three was probably going, going right. Then you have a one, which is going north, right? Then you have a uh, four, which was maybe going south, southeast. Then you have another one, which is going north. Z zero was north, I think. Or zero was north, yeah. So that's, that's just giving me a recipe of how to move if I follow the digits of pi. And that's basically what this thing is doing. And now if you are more... <laughs> that's three-dimensional, three right? So you can, you can also do 3D random walks in which you will do the same thing. You will have six directions in this case. You will have up, down, left, right, front, and back, basically. And you can add more and more and more directions to this. 
You see, I mean, th this is just a big waste of time, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, not really. But uh, for example, you could come up come up with um, ten different directions. The only thing you have to do is divide your circle into ten different angles. Oh, okay. So then you would have something more fair, if you wish. Like but 18? but people, well, eighteen, if you wish. But the thing is that we have ten digits, right? Zero, one, two, three. That's why we only have ten different directions. If you compare that to like the one that you wrap out again, there's no significant difference. So that's why people do, do it that way. But yeah, you can definitely do that. And um, let's see what else do I have in here. I actually have a little video. Maybe it's calculating the digits of pi or something? Let me look at in YouTube maybe. Still calculating, but that doesn't have anything to do. doesn't allow me to do that. Let me try to do this. Yeah, I tried that one. Maybe they hide it. Did I pass it? Oh yeah, here it is. Flow of pi. So let me let me tell you what's going on in here. <clears throat> so the idea is that basically what you were saying before, we can divide the circle in ten different directions instead of just six or four. So we can divide the circle in ten pieces. And each piece, I'm going to call it a digit. So do you see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, right? Yeah. Now we're going to play that game that it's called, what's the name of that game? That you, you grab a, a, a piece of string, and then you say something about something, and then you throw it to somebody else. And then the other guy say, like, I don't know, I like whatever. And then you throw it to somebody else. Do you know what that game? Maybe, I don't know. But we're going to do the same thing but with the digits of pi. So three is going to start and it's going to throw the, 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 the string to number one. Then one is going to throw it to number four. Then four is going to throw it to number one and so on. And then you will see that a net is going to start appearing. 
We're basically connecting the digits of pi. That's what is happening. So that means that we are adding more and more and more digits. The more lines we, we see, the more digits we're counting. I think this is the first billion digits. Yes. But you have a lot of them that sometimes looks like curvy, right? Everything is a straight line. All the lines are straight lines. They're just joining two numbers. But we have a lot of them that looks like they're curvy, right? Was that nice? So we were right here. So that's the, the final figure that we had, right? There should be some connections from 4 to 3, and there are no, well, there are no straight lines from 4 to 3. So there, they are, but they're very thin that you cannot see it. That's the thing. It's not very often. That's, the, that's what happens. But yeah, they, they wear connections right there. So let me show you a couple more pictures. That's similar to the other one that we had before, right? I guess that's uh, that's actually the the first billion digits of pi. Yeah. Where? Right here, or right there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's probably southern. I don't know. And this is another way of representing the digits of pi. Um, now this one is a little bit different because instead of representing every single digit, what this picture is doing is representing two digits at once. So this is a, this is a coloring um, the the coloring key for this. For example, zero is represented by this pink, but you see every circle right there actually is a combination of more than one color. Do you see that? So that means that, for example, the middle one should be three, one, and something, right? So three should be yellow, and one should be red. Well, actually, that's what happens, right? You see the middle point is yellow with the red circle in between. That is three, one. Then the next one should be four, one, and so on. So we are representing here, um, actually, I guess it's, uh, it's three digits at once, right? Because you, you see that every circle has three colors. Four, I've seen some with four. There's one that's like red and then blue and yellow. Like purple is blue, yellow. And Maybe blue. so, yeah. 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 I, see, I see some with four. So instead of, of representing a single digit, we're representing more digits at once with that, with that thing. And then just wrapping them around in a spiral. That's what it is. Oh, I'm going to get so you can probably see some patterns or something like that but still looks very random, right? So the idea is that you can represent randomness in lots of different ways. You can represent this hidden thing in, in, in pi with a lot of different pictures. 
And you can also grab pi out of random stuff. So there, the two things are very connected. Random things produce pi, and also pi produce random things. And that's the nice thing about, about pi. It's not just random stuff. It's actually stuff about randomness in pi. So that's the last picture that I have. And uh, thanks for, for being here with me. And hopefully you liked it. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can talk to me, or you can write me, or tweet me, whatever you want. And I'll be happy to answer you. Thank you. Is it, um, is it, fi is it finished calculating pi? Mm -mm, you can never finish, because it no, never ends. I mean, like, oh, that thing? Yeah. Let's see. 